Hi everyone, welcome to Malograna Food and Wine channel. This is episode one. We are in this beautiful 24th day of March in Eco Park, Los Angeles, which is a beautiful greenish neighborhood. Here with me is Brianna Warner Misha. She is the founder of Cow Wine Co, founded in 2020 in Northern California, uh, specifically on the Sierra Nevada foothills. Which Sierra is... Nevada foothills. So Sierra Nevada and Los Angeles. It seems pretty far. How? What happened in the middle? Like, how do you end up here from there, or vice versa? Yeah. So I have uh, lived in Los Angeles over a decade. So I've been here um, for a long time. But I'm originally from a really small town called Angels Camp, which is in the Sierra Nevada foothills, which is about six hours northeast of Los Angeles and I grew up on my family's 100 year old cattle ranch so I have um, those country roots but after college I ended up in Los Angeles where I've been working in fashion and lifestyle um, as marketing in the marketing world for about 11 12 years now so I'm kind of merging the two worlds which is like my past and my roots and how I grew up and kind of like lover of the land and the earth with like my city life down here um, and I think what really sparked it is um, during the pandemic you know we all had a moment to pause and kind of reflect on what was really important to us and I was getting a little fatigue of you know waking up every day and being on the computer and being like overwhelmed by technology and, and social media so I really wanted to get back to my roots a little bit and um, you know when I'm home on the ranch with my family I really enjoy getting up really early with my dad and tending the land and checking on the animals and I knew that that was something that was going to be important to integrate into my life um, despite living in this big metropolis of a city so um, my husband and I, uh, we've been talking about doing this for years, so um, I think the pandemic finally gave us some time to like actually work on it and, and get to sit down and really hone in on it because it's a lot of work and there's a lot of back end and a lot of details that go into it. But um, I have family friends um, in the Sierra, Sierra Nevada foothills, um, which is a really beautiful wine country that have been in the wine industry for, for decades. Um, so I reached out to them to kind of get some grapes and um, get started on our journey. And, you know, as we just launched this in 2020, it's a very new journey for us. And it's something that I want to continue to be learning about and growing and evolving. You know, the wine industry can be, you know, sometimes intimidating. So I think it's just good that we're open-minded and like learning as we go. So this is our first take into it with um, primary color. Um, we named it that because uh, it's our first red. Uh, we're huge fans of a blend. So this one is Carignan, uh, Grenache, and Merved. So Rhone style blends because uh, we love that like easy French style blend. So this is our first take um, and we're really excited about it. I think we kind of had the idea of you know that European style where you ha always have the table red that's sitting on the wine or sitting yeah. on the table in a carafe, something that's like easy and approachable, and everyone at the table can enjoy it, um, and you can eat it or drink it with anything with any sort of meal. So this is our first foray into it. Um, we're excited because the feedback's been been really great. Um, but as I said, it's a continuous journey for us as we learn to um, evolve and to grow and learn more about the grapes and the varietals. So all these grapes are from um, your surrounding vineyards? Yeah. Or uh, do you integrate with your own grapes? So right now we're working um, with some family friends who have these grapes. Um, the goal is in a couple years, you know, down the road, we would like to replant the grapes on my family's ranch because we do have the setup for it, um, but we haven't had time to tend to it. So, you know, in like a five-year goal, I hope that we can have our own grapes. But right now we're being collaborative and working with different um, winemakers. And the goal for our wine um, is to work with different winemakers and vineyards all over California because as we know like California's climate is shifting and changing and there's a lot of factors to take into it so the wines change every year and so what we want to do is kind of take the season's best and make what um, the land kind of 
gave the most to that year. So it changes with rain and drought and fire, especially in California. So oh yeah, North California yeah, was pretty bad. Yeah, lately, huh? so bad. So we want we don't want to stick to one recipe every year. We want to evolve as as we evolve and learn and grow. So we're looking to create um, yeah the season's best. So your wine is very balanced. Um, all the blends of the Carignan, Grenache, and Mourvedre in my in my tongue, they feel very mellow mm -hmm. and very put together. It's like a, not too structured, but as you said, it's like a daily drink table wine without being the boring table wine that you get at the store. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here talking to you. <laughs> um, so you said that you had like too much computer time and I pretty much understand you in the, in, in this landscape. Uh, it's very hard to be home looking at the screen where you have the nature around you and when you have like your family in a beautiful idyllic area which I guess is like the foothill of the mountains mm -hmm. and you have this beautiful view and why you are here and you have to design. But what, what do you think that like really sparked the idea, okay, now I want to get into wine. I want to put into the bottle, into the construction of the wine itself, but also into the design of the bottle, mm -hmm. what I know, and bring in something that, on my opinion, was not done very well that many times before by other winemakers. So what, what do you think about that? Well, I mean, you know, we do always still have to be on the computer a little bit. Like, I am a marketer by day, so, um, and there's an element to having to market the wine, too. So I think it was about finding that balance to where, you know, some days we didn't have to wake up and instantly get on the computer. It was like, we could be out, like, trimming the grapes, or we could be out bottling the wine and, like, being a little more hands-on. I think what makes me really happy is being able to integrate, like, that part of my family and, and my history and my roots into... My, my current day life um, and the long-term goal is to eventually you know plant our own grapes and grow that there so I think this was the the beginning seed of that into like learning I guess one of the main reasons we started is because we love wine so that's yeah. <laughs> so we love wine but also um, grew up with it like my families we've always been surrounded by vineyards and grapes and people making wine and stomping it ourselves and bottling it ourselves so it kind of grew up foot, on it yeah foot stomping foot stomping so that's something that i grew up with and wanted to carry on um so i feel like it's a little bit within me and also just a love for gathering with friends like you know you're in our home right now in our backyard and this is continuously a place where we have our friends and our family over with good food and good wine and music and that's something that's such a big part of our life so being able to create a wine that can be shared over a beautiful meal with beautiful friends is like the dream so this is our um, our beginning into it but it's just the beginning of our journey because as you know the wine industry is there's a lot to learn um, oh, yeah. but you just got to try I think but there is a lot to learn because there is so much but you don't have to really look at what others are yeah. doing you kind of can create your own creative way yeah uh, which are a redundant way of using a lot of the word creating but wine is like a work of art in my opinion mm -hmm. um, that's why I love winemakers and each one of them has a different approach they are the one who make a more commercial piece of art mm -hmm. because they just want to push the numbers and they they follow some specific rules yeah. and then there are others who are yes looking at that but they want to make something more unique something more boutique that gets appreciated by a different crowd mm -hmm. and that is what I think your wine comes more into play because it's not that typical um, hipsterish new age um, natural wine product that doesn't have a, a body to it has a narrative has the taste, has the funkiness, but it, it lacks the backbone of, of, of the wine story 
that holds the grapes into place. In your case, I think this wine is very well put together. Um, are you working with a, a winemaker or you came up with the blend yourself? We came up with the blend ourselves, um, but we did work with a winemaker from Hatcher Winery in the Sierra, Sierra Nevada foothills. But um, like I said, we're wanting to kind of continue working with different winemakers in different wineries up and down California, but we were really drawn to the Rhone style blend, that it's something that we enjoy. Um, and it was some, it's a little bit lighter and also the California climate like lends well to the Rhone style blends. Um, but our winemaker hadn't made this one before, so it was exciting to kind of bring something new. Um, and I haven't seen a ton of blends of this, but I also agree with you in that I think you just got to do what you want to do. I yes. think that you can't always just adhere to the industry ways and um, oh, yeah. otherwise it never ends. You know, there's always and there's... something, oh, what if I do that? What if I do that? And it's like an endless search project that, you know, never put it out. You just have to try. You and, just have to try. Um, I think that there's such a spectrum of natural wine. I mean, some of it is so sparkling, effervescent and more like tastes like a kombucha, whereas like I love that for a time and a place. But what I drink consistently and with my meals is more like this style. So it's something that we wanted to bring where, you know, I think that there's a lot of different trends up and down of what natural wine is and people's palates, but we wanted something that was a little more classic that can like be a tried and true like table red. Um, and when we made the label, you know, we kind of did a different couple of different iterations, but ended up just being Miles, my husband and I, like after a couple glasses of wine on Photoshop. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, we ended up doing some of it handwritten. Um, and I think just keeping it a little bit simple. Um, I love the artistic labels that are out there as well. I appreciate them all, but I think we liked the simplicity of this. Simplicity is always tough. As a marketer, you probably know yeah. that very well. Um, so. Do you have like other wineries as client or uh, who do you market usually like who, who's your typical client? Man, our client, I mean, I think it is someone that also appreciates like a more classic red that, you know, wants to pick it up for a dinner party. We have some people coming to pick some up later for a dinner party. Like, I think um, it's seasonless in a way too. Like it's not just a summer or a winter wine, it's a, it's all year wine. And so I think that's great for us because um, we're able to drink it throughout the year and work with different restaurants. And we're just in the beginning phases. So, um, you know, we're very grateful and excited about our partnership with you. Um, and we have some pop-ups coming with restaurants in April and in May. So we'll be keeping you posted on that. But um, Again, it's just the early, early stages and, um, you know, a winemaker that I admire and look up to, Noel from Beachy Wines, had once told us, you know, because I was telling him, like, you know, we were hitting some issues and having some setbacks and he just said, just remember that you're working with the earth and that there's some things you can't control. Right. And I think that that's a really beautiful way of looking at it, that, you know, in a world where we control a lot of our social media and what people see and what people do, when you work with the earth, sometimes, you know, it gives and it takes. And sometimes you end up with something a little bit different. But instead of being upset, I think you own that and embody that. And that's kind of the beauty of working and making wine. So, again, I'm excited to continue exploring that um, and making wine ourselves so we can, we can learn as we go. Yeah, that might take uh, by planting grapes from from scratch. You know, mm -hmm. are you preparing the land? I guess now, like uh, starting to have native plants going in and starting to add in those soil richness that is necessary for small plants to thrive. Uh, then you need to take care of deer problem, mm -hmm. I guess, yeah. up there a lot. Yeah, I don't know how you can do that in Italy. What what we do is we put a little cylinder around the plant, the plant oh, yeah. so their horn doesn't get Give into it. that <laughs> because that's what they do they don't really it depends if they're small they eat them if they're a little bit longer they just like to clean their skin on the on the grapes yeah um but after a certain threshold then they're good you just have to pass the first couple of years yeah yeah and it's a it's a long journey you know you can't just plant and be done and I think that that's our goal is to eventually plant our own grapes. We do have some acreage on our ranch that is allocated to that and has all the right setup for it. Um, so we're looking to invest into that and replant them and we very much believe in a 
you know, diverse crops and really healthy topsoil. And because we run a cattle ranch, we also believe in the biodynamic element of letting, you know, the cows and the cattle roam freely. And I think that makes for like a really rich soil and a really good outcome. So that's our, that's our goal. So hopefully, you know, you tune in for the next five years of for this. <laughs> I love it. I'm totally down for it. I can't wait to drink more. Uh, well, it's almost midday, so it's considering it's, the Italian lifestyle, like people who are retired, they will be already drinking from three hours ago. <laughs> so we're not out of the scope in here. Um, are you looking to um, have another blend in the future? Yeah, I think, well, we loved this one and I would, I would be interested in continuing it as well. But like I had said before, we don't want to be... We don't want to be tied to just one recipe always, like more of those traditional estate wine um, structures where they make the same thing over and over. I think as California's climate shifts and changes and we go through droughts and, and the fires and smokes and all those other factors that affect the soil and the land, you know, we want to take, we want to work with these different wineries and these different winemakers to do kind of the best of. So. Every year we want to work with them on maybe this varietal or this grape did well or produced better, um, depending on the harvest and the season. So I think that it's it's nice to allow a little flexibility in what you're doing. You don't have to stick to the same thing yeah. every time. Um, I think we will continue making blends and kind of taking the best of and putting them together to make a really beautiful um, table red. Um, and we haven't ventured into the white yet. We wanted to get a really great solid red down first. I think that's something we tend to drink a little bit more of, but um, I would love to venture into the white space too and explore that um, so we can have a nice little pairing. Um, but you know, one day at a time, one harvest at a time. <laughs> I'm so curious. So, so far, um, thinking, talking about distribution a little bit. A part of us, um, who are your typical uh, clients in here in terms of like people and restaurants? Um, you know, I think it's a, definitely a range because I think a lot of people, um, you know, all different demographics can really appreciate like a classic table red. You know, I think sometimes on the spectrum of natural wine, if you get like to a really specific like tart, bittery kind of space. There might be a smaller niche market that would like it, but I feel like this one is really well received. So I think it's a range. I think LA, um, you know, our friends and in the world and in the wine world and the restaurant world have been loving it and enjoying it all the way up to like all over Northern California where we're also distributing it, which is a little more of like a traditional palette because they're close to Napa and they're used to those like bigger cabs. Um, ours is not as full as that, but um, you know, our parents and like a little bit of the older demographic are also buying it up by the case too. So I think it's something that like everyone can find joy in, that it's not like super isolating and that it's a really specific um, flavor palette. That's lovely. Well, on our end, people are eating this up. <laughs> Like really, we, we this is like I think we did you like two orders in a month, or something yeah. like that. Um, we were not expecting to have that much interest, but I think because we, it, it's simple, it tastes great, and has a great label. People love it, and they just keep asking for it. Um, on this, I'm gonna ask you a couple of things, and we conclude. So. Uh, a part of on Melograna website and on our Uber Eats and Postmate, where do people, if they want to go to a restaurant or a store, uh, where can they go buy this wine? So right now we're doing local pickup here. We distribute with you. We're in Northern California, but we're, we're just in the very early stages of expanding. Um, next month, because we're still in March, so in April we're going to be doing a Wine Wednesday pop-up with Woon, which is in um, Filipino town. Um, but it's kind of like slow and steady wins the race for us, you know, we want it to be the right partner um, and, and we're also quite small, so it's nice to partner with other like-minded and smaller businesses as well, so we're not trying to just go, go big right now, um, so it's pretty humble means still, but um, we're excited to continue expanding this year as well. Okay, so if someone yeah. wants to reach out to you and know more about yourself, they can just That's follow it. you or follow us yeah. and we will always like <laughs> repost our respective links. So this is great. Cheers, Cheers. to Kawanko and their first primary color red blend. See you next time. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao.